My name is Alex Dorge and I'm an Ansible Solutions Specialist. And I'm going to be talking today about ServiceNow and the Ansible Spoke integration that's available with the Integration Hub Pack. So first off, what is Ansible Spoke? Ansible Spoke is an application that's part of the ServiceNow Integration Hub, either the standard or professional pack. Uh, really, it is a connector that helps streamline the process of connecting ServiceNow into the Ansible automation platform. So anytime I want to make outbound calls from ServiceNow to Ansible, Ansible Spoke will provide that integration for you. Leverages OAuth connectivity between both applications. And unlike if you've used the REST messages in the past, it leverages the ServiceNow flow designer to build out those workflows. I find it's a little bit easier in terms of leveraging variables, either from the catalog requests or previous items, um, whether they're tickets or everything like that. So it provides a little bit more of a drag and drop interface rather than the script method that's part of the REST messages. So let's dive into this setup and see how it actually works. Before we can go setting things up too deep, we do want to make sure that we have these settings available for creating OAuth2 tokens from an external source. So I'm going to go into the miscellaneous authentication settings, edit, and then make sure I have this particular box checked so I can create those tokens. So first off from the Ansible side of things, I'll need to make sure I have an application set up to set up that OAuth2 authentication. So inside the automation platform as an admin level user, I'm gonna to go to applications and create a new application. So in this case, I'm gonna set up a ServiceNow Ansible Spoke application. In this case, I'm gonna assign it to my infrastructure org. You can use default or whatever you have set up. I've got a redirect URI, which is set up for my specific ServiceNow instance, and then select the client type of confidential. This will then give you a client ID and secret. In this case, I'm going to save this on the screen until I get to that portion of the ServiceNow setup. Um, there's also a section where I need to make sure I set up allowing external users to create OAuth2 tokens, but I'll show that in a little bit. So from the ServiceNow side of things, as you can see from the applications, I've already installed Ansible Spoke just to speed up the process a little bit. So I do already have the integration hub pack and I have installed Ansible Spoke. And I will also show from the certificate side of things, it is necessary for ServiceNow to reach out to Ansible to not utilize the self-signed certificate. So normally you just create a new certificate, give it a name and paste in your certificate that you've assigned to the uh, Nginx application on your controller hosts. But in this case, I've already performed that aspect. So I'm ready to set up that integration. So now I'm going to go to the portion that actually involves Ansible Spoke. So in this case, I'm going to go to the connection and credential aliases. When I install Ansible Spoke, it automatically creates this Ansible Tower alias. So I'm going to go into that. And as you can see, it's set up properly already with a connection and credential type, HTTP, and it already has a configuration template and a connection attribute to leverage V2, which is the API on the Ansible side of things. So I'm going to create a new connection and credential. And this is basically just setting up the names for these different pieces for both the URL as well as the actual names. So this will set up all those different pieces. Fortunately, I've done this before, so it does make the process a little bit easier. This is where I paste in that client ID and client secret from the automation platform. So conveniently, I can just copy and paste. I can leave this same. I will need the right entity scope. Again, set this up to work back to my tower instance. And then the redirect, I will actually leverage the one that I have set up here to ensure that I reach out to the correct URL. One of the things that I'm also going to do because I don't want this to authenticate as in this case, my user, I actually want to leverage a service now user that I've created. So prior to getting that OAuth2 token, I'm actually going to log out. So that way, when I click create and get OAuth2 token in the new window that pops up, it has me log in as a different user. So now I can actually authenticate as my ServiceNow user. So now any jobs that occur inside Ansible from ServiceNow will actually show up as that ServiceNow user. So just in terms of audibility for me, it makes that process a lot easier. So now I'll just click authorize. And as you can see, token successfully retrieved. Please close this window. So I've successfully set up Ansible Spoke to have that connection between ServiceNow and the automation platform. 
So the next step that I'm going to start to do is actually creating a catalog item inside the service catalog. So I'm going to go to service catalog maintained items. I've already created a category for Ansible. So in this case, I'm just going to create a new catalog item, in this case around patching for my Linux servers. And I'll pass in a single variable called exclude if I want to exclude any particular um, packages when I go through that process. So in this case, I want to leverage the service catalog and I've already created a category for my different Ansible jobs. In this case, I've got an other category for patching and I will add in a short description of patching using Ansible spoke. I will just save this right clicking in the top and clicking save. So it stays in this window and then I'm going to go down to the variable section and create a new variable. So in this case, I just want a free text. You've got all kinds of options in terms of variables from multiple choice to single text. So in this case, I just want it to be single text. It is not a mandatory field, so I'm not going to check that, but I'm just gonna ask the end user, what packages would you like to exclude? And the variable name that I wanna use is just called exclude. And I'll click submit. Obviously you can add in all kinds of additional information with default variables, help text for the user to give them an idea of what they need, set it to be mandatory hidden. So if I want to set this as a set variable ahead of time, I can do that. But in this case, I'm just going to submit this. And now I've got my catalog item set up. So because I like to leverage workflows a lot in my environment out of the box, Ansible spoke does not have that capability. Fortunately, it is a very simple thing to add in leveraging flow designer where all of the work for Ansible kind of takes place. So in this case, I'm going to go to actions. And as you can see, I'm going to go search for launch. There is an already an action created for launching job templates, but there's not for workflow job templates. So fortunately, I can basically just take the job template action and copy it. So I'm going to copy this action called instead of launch of job, launch job template, I'm going to call it launch workflow job template. And I want this to be part of that Ansible spoke application. And this will basically ensure that when I search for it inside the flow designer, it will show up under the Ansible spoke application. So now I'll take advantage of this and change a few parameters. So I obviously don't want it to be job template ID. I want it to be workflow job template ID. So there's some things that are already hard coded, so I can't change. So instead I'll actually just create a new input in this case called uh, workflow job template ID. And Fortune actually uses that to already create it. I will delete the job, job template ID that's already there, and I will set this to mandatory. And just because I like consistency, I'll put it at the top. Then I'm gonna go into the pre-processing section. So as you can see, I need to make sure that there is a value there. So I do need to update this to be workflow job template ID. And I can take that input variable that I've had before and literally just drag and drop into that section and now it populates it. So that takes care of the pre-processing and I do need to update my script. So the script needs to actually handle, again, workflow job template ID instead of job template ID. So now that handles that portion. And then in terms of output variables, once again, I do want workflow job template ID instead of job template ID. So I'm gonna go through that process as well. To ensure that's all up to date. So while I could just leave job template ID, for me, I like the visual of making sure everything is accurate and up to date. So once again, again, we set that to mandatory, delete the existing one. And again, so it's consistent, I'll move that back up to the top. So I'll go to the launch job template section. I'll change this to launch workflow job template. This is all set up properly. And the only thing that I need to do is in this particular section next to where it's job templates, this will now be workflow job templates that's where the API endpoint is. And I also need to drag and drop over from the variables that are part of this, the actual workflow job template. So as part of the pre-processing, I'm actually going to drop, drag over this into that basically gap between launch, Oop, put it in the wrong spot. So basically in between launch and job templates, I need to place this particular uh, pre-processing pre job in there to ensure that I get the correct 
API endpoint to reach out to. This ensures that I basically leverage the number that's part of that job. So now this gives me that capability to launch to the API version two endpoint, which we had set as part of the connections earlier, workflow job templates, and then this also ensures that we get that correct API endpoint. So now I'm going to save it, and then I'll publish this so it's actually available as an action for me as an end user, because that's kind of an important part of the process. And then I can actually go through the process of creating a catalog item um, response through this flow designer. So now that this is all set up and ready to go, I'm gonna go back to the home and this time I wanna create a new flow. That's basically where everything takes place. So I'm just gonna call this AAP patching. I want this as a global application. For, so for me, you know, I'm gonna update things outside of the Ansible spoke. So it just gives me a lot of different capabilities that may not exist otherwise. So I'm gonna click submit. This will bring me into this particular flow. Obviously, most of this I want to trigger off of a catalog item. So that's gonna be the trigger that we leverage here today. So I'm just going to go through and scroll down. There's actually, fortunately, a service catalog application. I'm going to click that. And I do wanna make sure there are advanced options where this runs in the background. I don't need it to show up for the end user as far as they're concerned. It just kind of happens behind the scenes. So I'm gonna click done. Now my trigger is set. And as you can see, I get these additional items as part of it. And now I want an action to actually get the information from that particular catalog item. So I will search for get catalog variable. And this means I can pull all of the variables out of that particular catalog item. So I'm going to drag and drop this requested item record. So I get all of those variables that are available to me. There is a particular template, obviously, I want to use. And this is the one that I created earlier. So that AAP Ansible spoke patch. And as you can see, the variable that I created before is now available to me. So I can just click over and you can see it pops up over on this side. And now I can click done. So the variables that I created that are part of that request item are all available as well as the specific catalog variables that were passed in by that end user will now be available to me. So now I actually wanna add in the action to launch my workflow job template. So this, because I set up under Ansible, I'm just gonna search for launch and you'll see I have that launch workflow job template. So in this case, I need to use my workflow job template ID. So this is where I'll go back into Ansible and in this case, I want to log in. I can log back in myself. I could log in as a ServiceNow user, but I'm going to specifically look for a closed loop job that I have set up that's specifically designed around patching my Red Hat Enterprise Linux servers. So in this case, once I log in, if you look, I have that number 178. That's what I need to leverage in this particular section. You also notice in this survey, I have two items. I've got both packages to exclude as well as a ServiceNow request item, which you'll see how I set that up here in a second. So I'm just gonna paste that 178 in here. And also I now wanna set up my extra variables. So this is all part of basically what gets passed from ServiceNow into Ansible, typically leveraging that API capability. So as you can see, I'm actually going to copy and paste this. These are the two variables that I know that I need and I'm going to change exclude. I can actually again, drag and drop that from the right side. So I get that exact variable. I don't have to go through the specifics around what the user put in there or anything like that. And then I'm also going to do the ticket number. And in this case, I'm actually going to go through the process of, I want this specific catalog request. So as you can see, I've got all the information available to me from the end user. I'm actually gonna go through the process of getting that exact request. And in this case, the number, cause that's for my automation, that's what I use to provide updates and close it out you really can use any of these different items that are available to you. This is just how I have my particular automation set up and I'm going to put quotes around it. So it works properly. And as you can see, this now has everything that I need for the variables that gets passed to that end workflow. So I'm going to click done. Now that's all set up. If there are other things that I want to add in, I can. So you've got the capability to add in stages. So if I want to update and say, um, this is now a close complete request item, I can also add in you know, other pieces as well. So it just gives you a lot of capability for really every action that's part of ServiceNow. So whether it's updating the task itself or any of those pieces, this is all part of this particular flow. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click save and then I'll click activate. So it will be available to be selected as part of a catalog item. And then I'm gonna go back out of Flow Designer to that particular section. So fortunately, I didn't close out my maintained items, so I'm still in this section. 
I'm going to go to process engine and this will be where that flow is. So I can you know, start typing AAP and AAP patching is available to me, which I just created. I'm going to click save. And now I've set up both flow designer and my catalog item with Ansible spoke to be able to pass the variables from ServiceNow into Ansible. So fortunately, I'm gonna go back to my homepage to the service catalog that I've already created. As you can see, there's that AAP Ansible spoke patch. And maybe there's a package that I don't wanna update as part of this. So maybe it's the SOS package. And I'm gonna click order now. And that will then go through that flow. And as part of that flow, it will launch the job in the Ansible automation platform. So the beauty of this is you'll see it actually pop through inside the automation platform and you'll be able to take advantage. So my particular jobs have updated inventory on launch. So you'll see that kick off and you'll be able to see which particular user kicks it off for. So I'm gonna go into this workflow. As you can see, it's created with the ServiceNow user. It has that variable that I passed in and it does have the request number from the ServiceNow side. So this is part of the closed loop automation that I leverage where not only do I perform the patching, but I also update that end user request because that's important for my particular process. So as you can see, you know, it was already approved. I can see the request that I am. So these are items that I can also update as part of that flow designer. But in this case, I just wanna leverage the particular request and I'll use this to actually update and provide information back to the end user with exactly what was patched. So I can see the job running inside the automation platform. Patching is being performed. So it'll take a little bit. This is working across several Red Hat Enterprise Linux seven and eight servers. So it will probably take a little bit. But the beauty of this is I can then provide email notifications as part of Ansible. I can provide email notifications as part of ServiceNow. It just depends on how you want your particular automation to be set up. So as you can see, that patching job has started without, in this case, the end user ever needing to log into Ansible. I think that's one of the best parts about leveraging that ServiceNow integration is they'll just get updates back to their original request through email. So at this point, I can have a great idea of exactly what went on. So I'm actually going to log into my email because I like getting email updates as well. So obviously I have several things waiting for me as part of this, but once this job completes, you'll be able to see exactly what went on. So as you can see, the job finished. I've got a report, report was sent via email. So I'm gonna refresh. So the patching result completed. I can actually see a report that I've created with all my patching results. Maybe I also want this included inside ServiceNow. So as part of my workflow itself, I have a final job that closes out my patching. So there's a ServiceNow catalog update, which goes through the process of updating the work notes and closing it out. So I will actually, you can see the request state has been updated and I will refresh. And you can see the patching results passed in directly back to the ServiceNow catalog request. So it really is full closed loop automation with as simple as dragging and dropping variables, whether it's from the request itself or whether it's from variables that the particular user passed in inside the forms that you've created inside ServiceNow. So it gives you a lot of flexibility as you do this. So the entire process of setting up Ansible Spoke, I've actually provided a walkthrough on GitHub. So I will provide that link inside the description. Take a look at it, walk through it, get comfortable with it. It really is not a complicated process. I also have processes in there to do it via REST message, as well as the connection from Ansible back to service now. So you can see how I make updates to the catalog or to tickets and other pieces. So I encourage you to take the time to, to look through it and see how it works for your particular environment. Thank you for taking the time to learn a little bit more about ServiceNow and Ansible Spoke and how it can ease that integration process.